John Suat once said, just as a rule of thumb in your meditation, where things are still, that's happiness. Where things are disturbed, that's stress, suffering. So if you want to see the first noble truth, you want to see the three characteristics, look at where there's disturbance. In fact, one of the Buddha's main teachings on emptiness makes precisely this point. We tend to think of emptiness as being a very abstract metaphysical principle, lack of any self, lack of any self-nature even in things, even in experiences. But when the Buddha introduced the, the topic, talking about what it means to dwell in a dwelling of emptiness, it's a state of mind where you look at where the disturbances are and where they're not. And you don't add anything to what's already there, and you don't take away anything. But in other words, you don't deny the disturbance, but you don't create extra disturbance around what's there. Basically, teaching on being more and more sensitive to where the change and where the disturbance is in your search for happiness. as we're working on bringing the mind to stillness. It's pretty obvious when you're struggling with it that the inability to get the mind to settle down, that's suffering. And once the mind does get settled down, there's going to be a sense of ease. But that phase of being unable to get the mind to settle down, it's good to understand that. John Fuhrman once noted that a lot of people, if concentration comes too easily, they don't understand it. And then the days when it doesn't come easily, then they're really up the creek. What in the past was easy all of a sudden is hard, and they don't have any handle on the situation. It's the people who have some difficulty getting the mind to settle down. Those are the ones who, once they overcome that difficulty, know what they're doing difficult situations come up and you have a sense that you know how to handle it because you've been through that before. You understand the mind because you've had to work with it, see what gets results, see what doesn't get results. So if you're having trouble getting the mind to settle down, don't despair. Just realize this is part of the path, is understanding why it's hard to settle down. And the way to explore that is to try different approaches. Sometimes it means changing the object of your meditation. Sometimes it means changing your focus. If you're not ready to settle down with the breath, what things do you have to think about first to get the mind in the proper mood where it's willing to settle down? These are all parts of exploring stress, learning about that first noble truth. So even when the mind isn't settling down, treat that inability to settle down with respect. Watch it. You're not just going to sit there and accept it, but respect means seeing exactly what's going on and realizing that you can learn from this. And as the mind does settle down, then it's a question of getting more and more sensitivity. You move into one level of stillness. And when you first get there, it seems like a huge release from where you've been. There seems to be no sense of stress or burdensomeness there at all. But when you stay there long enough, you begin to realize that, that there is, if you're sensitive enough, if you look for where that element of disturbance is. Don't be too quick to do that. If you're just beginning to settle into a level of concentration, do your best just to stay right there. They talk about the foolish cow who is in one meadow and sees another meadow over on another hillside. One says, what's the grass like over there? What's the water like over there? Let's go see. And because she's foolish and inexperienced, as she walks down the ravine, she gets all tangled up in the rocks so that she doesn't get over to the, up the far side of the hill, and she doesn't, can't get back to where she was before. It stands for a person who's too eager to keep jumping through one level to the next, to the next, to the next, when you haven't really gotten had time to explore the level you're on. But the teaching on emptiness basically asks you to Look, where, there, where is there a disturbance and where, there, where is there not? 
What things have you let go of when you're in a particular state? What things are you still holding on to? The holding on there is, will have an element of disturbance. So this is what the teaching and emptiness about is about, is to look very clearly at where the disturbance is in your mind. Realize there's a noble truth buried in there. But you also need the lack of disturbance to give you the steadiness and the stillness that creates the background against which you can see the disturbance more and more clearly. It's like going into a house where a refrigerator is running. There may be other noises going on at the same time, but you can't hear them because of the hum of the refrigerator is disguising them. But once the refrigerator suddenly stops, you hear other things, the drop of the water in the faucet, a leak in the toilet. In other words, the lack of disturbance is what allows the very subtle disturbances to suddenly stand out. So this is one of the reasons why we're working on concentration, is to create that background against which the very subtle movements of the mind, those barely conscious intentions, create stress, create suffering. based on ignorance. As we create less and less disturbance in the mind, we clear away the background, so ignorance has fewer places to hide. So the, both the disturbance and the lack of disturbance, the lack of quietude and the ability to create a sense of quietude in the mind. This is where you want to do your exploration. This is where you want to keep digging around, because it's in this area that buried treasure lies. Just keep it simple. You read the history of Buddhism, the history of emptiness is very, very complex. Yet it gets in the way. The Buddha kept it simple. Where is there disturbance? Where is there no disturbance? And the ability to admit what's there and not add anything that's not there. That's what it means to dwell in emptiness. And this emptiness dwelling just gets more and more refined. So as you practice, always try to keep it simple. What's there? What's not there? And the question of what, ask for where is the disturbance? Where is the lack of quiet? Where is the stress? Where, when you're trying to make things really, really still, is there change? That's what you've got to learn how to comprehend. Meaning that's, that's what you have to learn how to untangle so you can let it go. Because it's funny, there are all kinds of attachments hidden in there. But the comprehension means that you see them for what they are and you can let them go. And the simpler and the more basic you keep it, the easier it is to see.